milestone in my office. I had my 65th hundredth patient in for evaluation of illnesses that quite frankly have been misdiagnosed and mistreated for at least the 10 years that I've been working in this field. When people have chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and they're told they're depressed and told they're stressed and they need to exercise more but yet they have a multi-system, multi-symptom illness that doesn't go away with rest, doesn't go away with antidepressants, doesn't go away with antibiotics. You could be one of mine. Um, a lot of people have. The last 10 years of my life have been completely different than what I trained to do. Uh, I finished Duke University Med School in 1977 and I wanted a rural family practice environment and I found that uh, in Pocomoke, Maryland, a little town on the eastern shore. Great crafts, uh, good people, wonderful wetlands, uh, and an ideal place to, to raise a family away from uh, traffic and crime. Everything I wanted. My life kind of changed in 1997. We started seeing my friends and, 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 and neighbors, uh, people called watermen. They worked on the Pocomoke River, bringing in fish that had unusual lesions, these sores. Uh, they were eating through the scales and the fins and just horrible things. But the fish were acting aberrantly. They were swimming as if they lost the ability to, to, to run away, as you expect a normal fish would do. And the uh, frightening issue was that people who were handling those fish were exposed to areas where fish were dying in large numbers started getting sick. The illness symptoms they have, you probably already know. They were the first of my Fisteria patients. Fisteria was the introduction for me to the world of biotoxin illnesses. And the symptoms of fatigue and cognitive impairment were respiratory problems and joint problems and gastrointestinal problems all happening essentially the same time. Yes, some days you might feel a little better. If you try to do too much on those days, boy, you pay for it. A couple days of just exhaustion following what seemingly should be normal of hauling a few loads of gravel in your backyard to help uh, make up for the work that you've missed because you felt too bad. The biotoxin illness patients are ones that early on in the Fisteria world no one had ever treated before. There had been a report of people exposed to these little dinoflagellates. They're like little algae that lives uh, in the estuaries where the incoming tidal salt wedge from the bay or an ocean meets the river as it comes down. People have looked at this organism and found workers in a laboratory made ill with this unusual illness and all the same symptoms that we talk about and know about they had. And I'm faced with looking at now a huge fish kills in 1997 and my very first day of participation as a treating physician after four or five months of really being interested in seeing what the problem was. The third patient come in and she had horrible diarrhea. It's no surprise, this kind of diarrhea that has no explanation gets people diagnosed as irritable bowel syndrome and other kinds of things. And she had, had taken antibiotics and she would taken uh, Pepto-Bismol, she would taken a variety of things and nothing worked. And I said off the cuff, as family practitioners like to do, we treat. And so I gave her some cholestyramine. Cholestyramine, or CSM to make the language a little easy, is an absolute horrible drug that's been around 50 years to treat cholesterol. And one reason we don't use it very much to treat cholesterol is you gotta take this powder that doesn't taste good and you put it into some water or juice or Gatorade, whatever you want, you stir it up uh, with the water, it doesn't dissolve, it glops, you drink this stuff, and, oh God, and you leave some of the scum in the bottom, and you stir that up, and you drink some more on an empty stomach and you gotta wait 30 minutes before you now can eat or take your medication. And you do this four times a day to lower your cholesterol. Well, who's going to do that? But the side effect is that it stops secretory diarrhea. So I very confidently gave this lady cholestyramine and said, there you go. And two days later, she calls back thanking me for stopping her diarrhea, which is what I expected. But she said, you know, my memory uh, is, is, is back to normal. I remember my passwords and where I left my car. My cough stopped. My headache went away. Well... 
Closed thiramine does not add anything. It only removes compounds, cholesterol, bile salts, and biotoxins. And because she did so well, us family practice, off-the-cuff doctoring, I gave it a few other folks. And they did fine. Well, so I wrote it up as an academic paper on diagnosis. I named it uh, uh, FISH. It was an acronym that the CDC later changed to PEAS, or Possible Estuarine Associated Syndrome. I thought Fisteria Human Illness Syndrome was, was much better. It made you know a little ring to it. Oh, I got the FISH disease. Wrote up the treatment protocol a couple months later, this back in 1998, got that published, and found myself in a world of argument. Because the CDC and the state of Maryland and Virginia and North Carolina and Florida did not want a big announcements on the front page that says, come to our waters and get sick from Fisteria. And so they said I was wrong, but there was so much outcry they had to have a team of experts come in to take a look, and lo and behold, they validated my work. And in 1998, the CDC agreed uh, that there was such a syndrome. Well, it's, it's a nice event in a, in a rural doctor to be prepared for an emergency like this. Uh, but who, who, who knew that that's where my life would change? But specifically, now the phone calls came from Florida. Come down to our estuary problems. Please take a look at the blue-green algae blooms that we have in all the major lakes of Central Florida, or Lake Klamath out, out here in, uh, uh, in Washington and Oregon areas with massive outbreaks uh, of, of toxin-forming organisms, you know, killing fish, making people sick, ruining water quality. And in 1998, someone came in with the same multi-system, multi-symptom illness, which we'll talk about in detail in a minute, but they had been exposed to uh, Fisteria or Ciguatera, one of the illnesses you get from eating fish from a reef and you go visiting Hawaii or the Caribbean or the Philippines, you come on with a terrible explosive illness. No, that wasn't something that you got from the cruise ship, that was a fish. And specifically be careful about Ciguatera. But here in 98 came this other person and the only exposure they had was to all this black stuff growing in their mold, in their, their, their closet, and it was mold. The water was coming in through ceiling leaks and roof leaks. They had the same illness syndromes, the same kinds of abnormalities, the same response to cold styramine. Well, life got a little better in 1998 when Dr. Ken Hodnell, who's a neurotoxicologist for US EPA, came forth with a special test that we're going to show you a bit later called visual contrast sensitivity. And interestingly enough, when all our blood tests are normal and all other diagnostic measures are normal in patients with fisteria illness and mold illness and blue-green algae illness, visual contrast picks out the people with the illness 92% of the time. Not 100%, 92. And even better, we can show that visual contrast improves with therapy. Well, Ken kind of came out with this wonderful idea in July of 1998. And by August, I was doing his testing, and since that time, I've done probably 9,000 visual contrast tests, and it's a beautiful test. It's so disarmingly simple that how can accessing the neurologic function of vision, now remember, that's not visual acuity, well, that's the Snellen chart, you're 20, 20, get your driver's license, you know, you need glasses to drive now because you're getting old. Visual acuity we control and we also control for near vision, far vision, color, static, motion, and peripheral vision. And we have contrast, the ability to separate uh, darker gray from lighter gray. White from black is one kind of contrast. But this specific mathematical test will look at presenting different frequencies of stimulus. And we reduce the stimulus by 0.15 log units as we go from left to right on the card. And we repeat that for each of five frequencies. It gives us a little grid of 45 numbers that we can record for one eye and 45 for the other eye. And we put all that data together and it's fascinating. This non-invasive portable test is reliable, it's reproducible, costs just a few minutes of time.